on CCTV, a robbery in Dublin's Temple Bar where a victim is knocked unconscious. In Darren Turn, County Kildare, a suspect forces a pregnant woman out of a car during a hijacking. In Blessington, County Wicklow, a house goes up in flames following a case of arson. Can you help the investigation? And 10 years after a fatal hit and run in Ardrahan County Galway, Jerry Keane's family appeals once again for your help. Somebody knows something, we know that, but we're asking for help here, pleading for help. That and more coming up on Crime Call. You're very welcome to Crime Call. We're live here in the studio and our call taking team is standing by ready to take your calls. We have a show packed with investigations. Gordy are hoping you can help solve. So let's get started with this month's crimes captured on camera. Greg, what have you got for us tonight then? Well, Sharon, we have a number of unsolved crimes captured on CCTV that we're looking for viewers' help with tonight. First up is an assault. Now, this assault took place in Temple Bar on the 15th of October here in Dublin. Just after 1am, one man that we're looking to identify. Let's have a look at what happened at 1am in the morning. So these two parties pass each other on East Essex Street in Temple Bar. The man we want to identify has a beard and a baseball cap. Now, he can be seen here shouting at another man. A person moves the suspect away, but he returns to confront the other party. Now, he throws a glass bottle at the man and he then punches him. He walks away, but you can see the suspect at the top right of your screen as he continues to shout at the victim. Now that's footage we have from a CCTV camera. We also have some of the interaction caught on a mobile phone. We're going to show that now. And we can actually hear the man talking, the suspect, so we can see what his voice is. fucking kicking bottles, use your fucking brain. Okay, so we can hear, it kind of sounds like you might have a North American accent. We're going to have a look at that photo again from the mobile phone, because that's the best picture we have of him. We can see the baseball cap, looks like he has a thick beard, and that maroon jumper with the dark trousers as well. So if anyone has any information as to who that man is, please do get in touch with Sound and vision on that man, that which one, might yeah. be helpful. Close enough to Temple Bar, we're off to Mount Street. Uh, a robbery? That's right, this is a robbery from Mount Street up, or, <coughs> excuse me, in Dublin from last August. And we're hoping that someone will be able to recognise this man seen walking here in the grey hoodie. Now it's just after 3pm when the man follows the woman in front of him along Marion Square East. She turns onto Mount Street Upper and the suspect continues to follow her. Now further up the street the man looks over his shoulder and this is when he makes his move. He grabs the woman's bag and at first the woman holds onto the bag but the man then threatens her with a broken bottle and she lets go. The suspect then runs away and turns down Stephen's place and this is where we get a really good look at him here as he turns the corner. We're going to have a closer look at him here while we have that photo up of him because it's a good picture of his face, we can see it quite clearly. And the he has bottle. The bottle in the right hand, that woman's bag in his left hand and the grey hoodie there. Uh, again, it's a very clear image of him just as he's at the corner here when we zoom in. So hopefully tonight someone might be able to recognise that man and again, if you do, we would like you to call the programme here tonight. We're staying in Dublin. Dame Street, this is a burglary. That's right, it's a burglary from the 8th of March, Tuesday the 8th of March from last year. It's just before 6am when this man makes his way down the side alley of a pub. Now he lifts a brick from behind a pallet and then walks back up the alley. He uses the brick to smash a side window and he can be seen unlatching and opening the window before he climbs into the bar. And once inside, this man makes his way straight to the till. He forces it open and he takes notes that were left inside. He also took the coin drawer from the till. Now the man climbs back out of the window and he leaves the premises using the gate at the end of the alley. And we're just going to show the footage again because the two f images we have, one looks like he's wearing bright clothes on that camera and then inside the pub, it's obviously he's wearing dark clothes, just a different type of camera. So that's just the man as he's coming up the lane there. Maybe someone can see his face there and recognise him. And while he's inside here, I know he's well covered up. So we might be looking for information about this burglary. And again, if you do have any information about that suspect or any of the suspects we've shown, please do give us a call. Our call takers are standing by and here's how to get in touch. You can phone us for free on 1800 40 50 60. Free text crime followed by your information to 50123. If you're in Northern Ireland, call us on 08000 393 393 or wherever you are, email crimecall at guarded.ie. 
We'll be back with Greg in a couple of minutes. But next, here's what happened when a car was hijacked at a service station in Darren Turn, County Kildare. Just before 5pm on the 18th of December, a couple pulls into a service station in Darren Turn Village in County Kildare. a distinctive red coat crosses the forecourt and enters the shop. Would you go back and get us a bar of chocolate? Yeah. No, but I'm pregnant. Get out or I'll stab you at the bits. The suspect then takes the car and heads in the direction of Allenwood. The Renault Captor was seen in prosperous County Kildare a short time later. At 5.30pm, the man pulls into a service station in Monreed, just outside Nace. The suspect then leaves the petrol station without paying. There's been no sign of the car to date. Well, Garda, Aoife Lacey joins us now from Leakslip Garda Station. Aoife, first up, where's the car? It appears to have vanished. Yes, well, exactly, Sharon. The car has yet to be recovered. Um, so I suppose we're appealing to the public that if anybody has seen this vehicle since that date or on that date, if they could let us know. Okay, um, so it could be anywhere. It, it could be parked up. It could up be parked up anywhere, yeah. And there's also a possibility that it may be parked up and it now may have different registration plates on it. Okay. So that's important to keep in mind as well. All right. Uh, let's hone in on the suspect uh, for a minute. Some CCTV uh, here to help us along. That jacket, quite distinctive. Yes, it's a quite distinctive red Tommy Hilfinger jacket, and you can see that it has fur across the hood. Um, this coupled with the CCTV footage, which is of very good quality, and um, mm. we're hoping that somebody out there um, will know who he is. Um, he's very distinctive hairline as well. You can see when he pulls down his hood, he's kind of balding at the top. Yeah. Um, he's five foot seven, five foot eight, average height, average build, Dublin accent, blue eyes. Um, sandy coloured hair and uh, stubble on his face. Right, and we're looking at the, the, the hijacking there. Absolutely terrifying for the, for the victim concerned. And what we're doing tonight, Aoife, is you are asking our viewers to cast their mind back to that week before Christmas, is that correct? Correct, yeah, the week before the 18th of December. Right, so the Saturday before Christmas. Correct, yes. Three separate locations. Three separate locations. So the first incident occurred in Durren Turn, and that's the footage we've just seen. Um, the vehicle was then spotted in Prosperous in County Kildare, and then the last sighting of the vehicle is at 1736, and that's at Monreed in Nace in County Kildare, where it was involved in another incident. Okay. That's the last sighting we have of the vehicle. Right, so... Did our viewers see the car? Uh, do they interact with the driver by exactly, any chance? Exactly, yeah. Or if they have any dash cam footage or if they've seen anything suspicious, anything at all that may aid us in the investigation. All right, very good. I should ask you before you go, how are our victims, particularly our mum-to-be? Very shaken after the ordeal, but physically OK, thank God. Right, OK, Aoife, thank you uh, indeed for that. And if you do have any information that could help, here are the numbers to call. You can phone us for free on 1-800-40-50-60.
free text crime, followed by information to 50123. If you're in Northern Ireland, call us on 08000 393 393 or wherever you are, email crimecall at garda.ie. If you've been a victim of crime, you can call the Crime Victims Helpline on 116006. Next to a case of arson in Blessington, County Wicklow. This investigation is being run by Detective Inspector Seamus Ryan, who joins us now. This is a, a shocking case, uh, Seamus, and we'll run a bit of CCTV in just a moment. But first, can you locate the, the scene of the crime? It's Glending Estate. That's correct. It's Glending Estate. It's an estate just outside of Blessington, uh, approximately one mile uh, from the town centre. Uh, it's on the R410, which is the main NACE road uh, leading out of it. It's a one way in, one way out estate along that road. And this uh, occurred on 28 into the 29th of October, 22, at 1.20 a.m. in the morning. So the wee hours of uh, fr uh, Saturday, the 29th of October. So it was a Friday night into the, the Saturday morning. Um, we have some CCTV. Let's uh, take a look at this and talk us through what we're looking at here, Shane. You see the car comes in. It's a dark black, say it, Leon. Uh, does a U-turn, perhaps just down from the target house. We see the individual goes up, damages the window and sets the fire going. Uh, he's wearing a blue hoodie with the hood pulled up. He returns to the car, but it's not to flee the scene. He actually gets uh, another petrol can, uh, fuel can out and adds accelerant to the fire. So he's uh, over and back, over and over back. Over and back, yeah. The, li the living room becomes engulfed in flames and he makes good his escape then. How, how are we describing the suspect structure, well, height, that kind of thing? As per the CCTV, he does a blue hoodie with the hood pulled up. We will give him um, average height, right. average weight. Uh, that's as much as known about him at this stage. OK. Uh, maybe that coupled with details about the car, because I, I, I think this can be described as a fairly souped up, uh, say it, Leon, is that right? That's correct. Uh, we believe it's a say it, uh, possibly say it, Leon uh, FR model, or even the, uh, the say it Cooper. Uh, would say a year manufactured between 2005 to uh, 2012. Uh, distinctive silver alloys on the car. Uh, to be definitely a, a sporty model of the uh, the say it. And Seamus, this could so easily have been a tragedy. There were uh, occupants in the house, there were children in the house. They were lucky to escape with their lives. That's correct. Very fortunate to get out and luckily are, they're all safe and well. But a very traumatic experience for them. But we're uh, appealing to the public if they have anything they can come forward with and help us, no matter how insignificant or, uh, they may think it is, it could be the thing to unlocking it for us. If they were in the Glending State area, uh, that general area, before or after? Before what or what after. do we know about the, the escape made? Well, if you uh, exit out of uh, the Glending Estate, you turn left, will bring you back up into Blessington Village, or you turn right, which will bring you uh, towards Nace. So anyone that's travelling along that route on the night, uh, even may still have dash cam footage, albeit this length of time afterwards, but uh, any help would be appreciated. OK, and we're, again, just by way of reminder, what, 1.20, 1 1.30, 1 uh, Saturday morning, 29th of October. That's correct, into Saturday morning, 29th of October, 1.20 a.m. OK, and dash cam, presumably, if it's available? That's correct. We won't say no. No, say we'll look for it. <laughs> All right, Thanks Seamus, very much. thank you. And if you do have any information that could help the investigation, the numbers are on your screen next. We're going to go back to Greg for more CCTV. Greg, you have a couple more clips. We have a few more clips for us, Greg. We do have three more clips to show. The first one is a burglary from Bal Doyle. Now, this took place on the 15th of August last year. One person involved with this, so let's take a look at the footage. Now, this is just after half three in the afternoon. You can see this man, he approaches a house and he enters the porch. Now, he waits there for a moment, and when he sees that nobody's around, he makes his way into the house. Now, shortly after, the man reappears and closes the door as he leaves, but he's now wearing a face mask and carrying a black bag that he was not carrying when he entered the house. Subsequently, a box containing cash, valuables, jewellery and personal documents was found to be missing. So we're just going to have a look at that footage again, just as he walks up to the door, because it's the best picture we could take from the footage. Uh, when he comes up, you can see the black hat that he has on, the black bucket hat. He also has that uh, sleeveless black top on and the green 
t-shirt underneath. But uh, that's a pretty good picture of him. And I think if you do know that man, if you recognise that face, we'd be hoping that you would call us here tonight. You have three cases of bank card fraud next. That's right, with the same bank card that was used in three different areas. We're going to take a look at the first one, which happened at a petrol station in Lusk in May last year. Now, Gardy want to identify the woman entering the shop here. She's using a card which was fraudulently misappropriated from the owner. And she goes to the ATM at the back of the shop and she makes a withdrawal using the card. Now, she then leaves the shop, but she drives off in a black Vauxhall or Opal Vectra. We can just see it there in the forecourt. Now, the next incident, the second one happened at a bank in Drogheda. Now, this suspect enters the bank and makes his way to the ATMs inside the bank. And he uses the same card as the woman to withdraw cash. And after he gets the cash, the man leaves the bank. Now, obviously, the card does not belong to that man. He didn't have any permission to use it. And that's him walking out of the bank there after making a withdrawal. The third suspect, again using the same card, he also goes into the same ATM in the bank in Drada. This time he has a black hood up and we can see no sign of that suspect's face, unfortunately. We'll show a photo of him again at the end. But he used uh, the card to make an ATM withdrawal and again, obviously, he had no permission to use that card and it wasn't his. So, we're looking for three people in this. The first, the woman with the black hair and the glasses who was driving that Opal or Vauxhall Vectra. Second man, He's well covered up in the photo, but we can see that hoodie with the 23 on it. Maybe someone might know him from that. And then the third man, unfortunately, or whoever the suspect is, cannot see them at all. But perhaps someone might have information about that incident. And again, if you do, please do get in touch. OK, we're bound for Mallow, County Cork next. That's right. This is a theft from a supermarket in Mallow and Cork from last February. And this is the man at Gardaí are looking for your help to identify. Now, the man makes his way to the electrical section of the shop where he can be seen removing a sharp sound bar and subwoofer system from the shelf. Now, he then picks up his bags and he leaves and he makes his way back through the shop towards the entrance. Now, he proceeds to walk out the entrance where he pauses for a moment before continuing out the door with the sound system in hand. Now, we get a very good shot of the man as he leaves the car park on foot here in a moment. And this is the still we took from it here as he was going around the corner, because it's the clearest image, it's a very clear image of his face. Actually, we'll just have a look at him there. He has a striped hat on. He has that navy jacket with the orange t-shirt underneath. So again, it's a quite a, a clear picture of him. So if you can help with that man or any of the people we've shown so far, the numbers uh, are on your screen. And we'll be back to you uh, a little later on. Thanks, now, uh, Still to come, a cash and transit robbery in Mullingar County, Mes West Meath, where the suspect makes away with thousands of euro. And the family of Jerry Keane, killed in a hit and run 10 years ago in Ardrahan, County Galway, appeals for your help. Somebody knows something. We know that. But we're asking for help here, pleading for help. Join us right after the break. Did you prices? Bro, I don't like it. Bank in the Republic accounts. If your notice period now queued for closure, fast approaching. If you are still relying on this or call 08. See all new confident affordable car in new tire low monthly price hotel. Your day the right one your way through a great the best time. Oh yeah. And you're very welcome back. In just a moment we'll be speaking to the family of Jerry Keane, who was killed in a hit and run incident in County Galway ten years ago. But first, we're back with Greg and more CCTV. Greg, another theft, only down the road from us here in Donnybrook. That's right, in an off-licence on Morehampton Road here in Dublin from last August. One man that we're looking to identify from this piece of footage, and this is the man here in the off-licence. Now, he looks around before he reaches the top shelf and takes down a bottle of champagne, which is in a gift box. Now, again, he looks around, puts the box into his bag then. Moments later, he reaches up again and takes a second bottle from that top shelf. And again, he looks over his shoulder before putting this box into his bag. Now, he remains in that area of the shop for a few moments before making his way to the front of the off license. There, he interacts briefly with an employee of the shop before leaving, taking the bottles with him. Now, the total value of the two bottles of champagne was over 4,000 euro. So, we're going to have a look at a very good image we took of the man while he was in the shop just before he came out the door. You can see he has those aviator sunglasses style glasses on him, uh, the dark t-shirt and the grey bottoms. It's a clear picture of his face, so hopefully someone will recognise him. And again, if you do, 
please get in touch. A man with expensive taste. More yeah. booze being taken uh, this time in Gort, County Galway. That's right, a theft from a supermarket in Gort, in Galway. One person we're looking to identify, and it's this man here in the orange high-vis trousers. Now you can see as he enters the supermarket, he makes his way straight to the alcohol section. He then goes to the rear of a display stand and he begins to pick bottles from the back before putting them into his basket. When he's finished, he moves to another part of the shop and he takes the bag from his back and is then seen clearly moving the bottles from the basket into his black bag. And once all the bottles have been transferred, the man lifts the bag and makes his way to the front of the shop and he leaves without paying for any of the alcohol. So again, what we'll do is have a quick look at him. And the best photo we took from our CCTV, we can see there, he does have a mask on. You might be able to see some of his face, but that uh, yellow high-vis jacket and the orange high-vis trousers. So again, any information, please do get in touch. And Kilkenny City is our last protocol tonight, Greg. That's right, a third theft instance we have now from an electrical shop in Kilkenny City from September. So we can see this man here in the electrical shop in Kilkenny. Now he's wearing a Nike hoodie a black baseball hat and beige trousers. He walks over to a phone display, he picks up one of the phones and unchains it from the counter. And he then walks away as he pockets the phone. It happens very quickly, so we're just gonna look at it again. We can see the man picking up the phone, unhooking it from that security device. And as he turns to walk away, we see his left hand put the phone into his pocket. And then the man left, obviously, without paying for the phone. We do have three good images of the man uh, while he was in the shop. The first one we can see, it looks like he has a neck tattoo there, mm. just on the right-hand side. Second one's a good image of his face from the front there. He's wearing the glasses and the baseball cap. And then the last one, again, is kind of a side profile picture of him. So again, any information as to who that man is or any information about any of the clips we've shown so far tonight, please do give us a call. The numbers are on your screen. Greg, thank you. Thanks, Sharon. Next, to a cash and transit robbery in Mullingar County, Westmeath, where a suspect made off with thousands of euro. Just after 6 p.m. on the 20th of December last, a cash and transit driver completes his final delivery here in Mullingar Town. He arrived at the Circle K eastbound on the N4 just outside Mullingar. He drove onto the forecourt just after quarter past six. After the driver walked out of the service station and back to his van, he was confronted from behind by a man with a knife. The suspect forced the driver into the van to open the safe. He then took a considerable sum of cash and placed it into his backpack and into a brown box. The suspect forced the driver into the cab of the van and instructed him to drive east onto what he called the Autobahn. He drove the van eastbound on the dual carriageway up until the Downs Caloocan exit. The suspect demanded the driver to pull in the van. He reversed it into a gateway. He then left the van via the back door on foot. We know that the suspect with orange patches on his jacket and backpack was next seen at the R156 Downs to Caloocan roundabout. Do you recognise this man? Were you in the Downs area or the Circle K service station that night? Did you see anyone acting suspiciously? If so, please call Crime Call tonight. Well, guard to Thomas Brennan from Mullingar Guard. The station has more on all of this. And uh, Thomas, one obvious question arising out of the VT, was the security van followed? How did the suspect know to be in that location at that time? Um, that is a possibility, Sharon, uh, and that's something we wish to establish from this appeal. Um, we are aware that the suspect arrive, arrived at the scene on foot, uh, which is quite unusual because the Circle K west or eastbound is on the dual carriageway. So uh, we believe that the suspect may have been dropped on the N4 eastbound or westbound before entering 
the Circle K East by foot. Right, so it may have been watched or, or, or followed Correct. for a, a period before the, the crime. Uh, talk to us about the suspect. Limited enough information about his physical appearance, but a couple of other bits. Correct. Uh, he does have, uh, he's wearing a balaclava, so we don't have any distinguishing features on his face, but we do have a statement stating his size. Uh, he's believed to be approximately six foot two in height, which is quite tall. He's of a strong build and he's wearing a ski jacket which is brown with orange patches on the shoulders and on the back. Uh, we do believe that this jacket is quite distinctive and will help us identify the suspect. He's also wearing a backpack, as you can see from the footage, and there are reflective marks on the straps of the backpack. Right, an unusual enough knife he was wielding as well. As well as that, he was holding a knife, um, and the knife is described as being approximately six inches in length, and it had a curved end to it, like a filleting knife. Right. And curiously, and this may or may not be significant, he used the term autobahn instead of motorway. Correct. So we have to look at the possibility that the, the suspect is from uh, Eastern Europe or Germany. OK. Uh, you're also looking for witnesses or potential witnesses in the forecourt uh, that day who may have seen all are part of what unfolded. Uh, tell us more about that, Thomas. Yes, uh, we have uh, spoken with the majority of people that were in the filling station that day and we identified them from the vehicles that they were using. Uh, there are two vehicles. Uh, the first vehicle is a Citroen Berlingo. Uh, this is a mid-sized van and we believe the model of this vehicle is from 191 upwards. He was there for quite a while. He was there for approximately half an hour parked in an area where we believe he may have seen some activity prior to the robbery. OK, and the other vehicle? The second vehicle that we are interested in is an Audi A6 uh, saloon vehicle. Um, it's dark in colour, potentially black, and this was parked up at the AdBlue pump. Um, the driver of this vehicle carried out his business and then exited the okay. uh, forecourt. So if those drivers are watching tonight, if they recognise that it's them, uh, you want to hear from them? Exactly. We're very eager that the drivers come forward because they may have seen something that they might not think yeah. is important, but it could be very important to our investigation. Right. And the, the van, the cash and transit van, it was a Mercedes uh, Sprinter and the, the driver was forced onto the motorway, onto the N4, eastbound uh, and more potential witnesses after that. Correct. So he was uh, directed to drive eastbound on the N4 for approximately four kilometres and he took the next exit off the N4 for the Downs. Um, he drove down that exit towards the Downs and was directed to pull into the left-hand side and reverse into the gateway of Thomas Flynn Fuels Field. Um, the, um, the suspect then exited the rear of the uh, van and he was still wearing his uh, balaclava over his, over his head but as well as that he was carrying a cardboard box. Oh, right. He didn't um, go into the field, he, he walked down, along down the, verge. the verge, the grass verge and he was next seen approximately 400 metres away at the Downs Caloocan roundabout. Okay. Um, because the area is such a rural area we believe that he was picked up okay. at that roundabout or close to it and we're eager to speak to anybody who may have seen him or seen a vehicle acting okay. suspiciously they may have been time. parked up or in may a have been parked up or, or they may have been doing a loop waiting for the man okay. to come down to them. So you're casting your net out far and wide far there. And Let's wide. Uh, see what comes back, Thomas. Thank you indeed Thank you very much. Uh, for that. And if you do have any information that could help this investigation, here's how to get in touch. You can phone us for free on 1800 40 50 60. Free text crime, followed by information to 50123. If you're in Northern Ireland, Call us on 08000 393 393 or wherever you are, email crimecall at guida.ie. If you've been a victim of crime, you can call the Crime Victims Helpline on 116 006. Now, it's just over 10 years since Jerry Keane was killed in a hit and run in the village of Ardrahan, County Galway. Earlier, Jerry's brothers, Thomas and Albert, came to studio and I started by asking them what they remembered of their older brother. He was a gentle guy, you know, um, a hard worker. He loved the farming, he, I gather. He did, that was his life. He, he, he farmed since he was 14, I suppose, or 12, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. There wasn't be much schooling because he, was, he had to stay at home from school in order to help with the, uh, the, with the land at home, you know, to rear the rest of us, yeah. you know. That would have been typical, I gather, at the time. That, that's the way it was. That's mm -hmm. the way it was in our place anyway, you know. And he was well, well loved in the community, Tom. Oh, yeah, everyone liked him, yeah. Mm. He was jolly, like, he was, you know, happy. Very happy and jolly. 
Yeah. And he liked a bit of country music, I gather. Yeah, yeah, always Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Well, you'd hear it. The radio good bit would be blaring. You'd hear the radio a good bit of way if Saturday morning. Yeah. It would. And that was his outlet going for a pint of that a Friday. It, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was it, yeah. yeah. And that's the night he was just crossing the road. He was in the middle of the road, I saw him the last time in here, and he was lying down there, and I spoke to him, and you know, and I'll never forget that. That's a mermaid that'll never leave. And every time you pass, and I pass there most days, in that white line where his head was, was set out, seen, like, you know. How could you ever forget that? Well, you don't really, but you just like to get it finished with, because uh, we're getting old now as well, you know, and uh, I'm his age now, you know, and it would be great to, uh, to get it sorted and, you know, for everyone involved, as I say, again. And yeah. presumably there's a, a sense of loyalty to your brother Jerry and a sense of duty that you need to pursue yeah, this yeah, Tom. Well, yeah that's yeah you, that's in it as well you'd be thinking of that you, you have to try and do something to get justice like you have to. Mm. So the direct appeal then if the driver is watching tonight well, Albert. Well we'd say please make that phone call like we're, we're not angry we were just sad you know and it would be great if somebody would make a call and tell us, you know, and, and if you know who owned the car or where the car is or where it was, or did you repair the car even? You know, and that's 10 years ago now. Um, somebody knows something, we know that, but we're asking for help here, pleading for help. It's not about revenge, I think you not said a little at all, earlier no, on. No, 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 nobody goes out to do that, you know. So um, it would be great. And the least, that your brother deserves, Tom. Oh yeah, yeah. He deserves that anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that has gone out loud and clear <laughs> to mm -hmm. our viewers tonight, and we'll see what comes back. Albert and Thomas, thank you so much for, for joining thank us you. on the program. Nice thank meeting you. you. Thanks. Joining us now from Gortka, the station is Inspector uh, Georgina Lohan. Well, it's clear that the family hasn't uh, forgotten about Jerry, and neither have the guards, uh, Georgina, an elderly man crossing the road going for a pint. Yes, the, uh, the loss of, uh, of Jerry is as real and as heartbreaking today for the family um, as it was 10 years ago. Mm. Um, Jerry um, died tragically in this fatal road traffic collision on the 16th of November uh, 2012 at approximately 7.30 p.m. in the village of Ardrahan. He had been just dropped off by, his, uh, by a family member and was crossing the road um, uh, heading over to the public house was what he, where he was going to and he was uh, tragically uh, hit by a car and the car failed to stop mm. um, and carried on in the direction of Galway. And we saw the burden of grief being carried by the family. Uh, presumably, being charitable, it's not going to be easy for the driver or even the, the loved ones of the driver in circumstances where he may have confided in, in others. That's right, we'd appeal to uh, the driver, make a direct appeal to the driver tonight to come forward and make himself known or herself known to uh, Ungar the Shikona. Um, and I'd also make a, an appeal to his or her conscious um, or a family, a family member, if they know any, anything in respect of this uh, fatal road traffic collision, to come forward and make themselves known. Um, or to anyone who uh, repaired um, a vehicle um, or uh, disposed of a vehicle uh, in the weeks or in the days uh, following this uh, fatal traffic collision. Uh, we, we, we heard, I think it was Albert there, say it, it's not about revenge, it's just that final piece of the jigsaw and having that bit of closure. That's right, we'd be as sensitive as, sensitive as we uh, possibly can to anyone who comes forward with any information in respect of this collision. And you're sure of the car, aren't you? Tell us more about That's the car. Right. We have the CCTV, Georgina. That's right. That's a stock image of the car. We're looking for um, um, the, uh, a Ford Focus hatchback uh, 2005 to 2011 model. And um, that CCTV is uh, CCTV of the uh, railway crossing just shortly um, uh, beyond the collision scene uh, on the Galway side. Okay. And um, it, it's a dark coloured uh, Ford Focus car. And we would make that appeal to anyone who has any information in um, respect of disposal or repair to a, um, the vehicle involved. OK, well, that appeal has gone out loud and clear. Thank you, uh, Georgina, for that. If you do have any information that might help Gordy solve this case, the numbers are on your screen.
next. It's Gartha Eilish McBride with suspects Gordy are hoping you can help locate. Thanks, Sharon. First tonight, Gardaí at Waterford City are looking for information on the whereabouts of 33-year-old Brian Stokes. His last known address is at Colour Manor, Waterford City, and is believed that he may be in the Waterford or Carlo areas. Brian is described as being 5 foot 8 inches in height, of stocky build, with black hair. If you do know his exact whereabouts, please contact the programme. Next, staying in the Waterford area, Gardaí are looking for information on the whereabouts of 43-year-old Marie Connors. Her last known address was at Ardmore Park, Ballybeg in Washford City. It is believed that she could still be in the Washford area. She is described as being 5 foot 6 inches in height, of stocky build, with brown and grey hair. If you have any information about either of these people or their whereabouts, do get in touch. Back to you Sharon. Thank you, Ailish. Now time for some updates. Gartha Dong is with us. What have you got, Dong? Yes, Sharon. Last month, we received plenty of phone calls relating to CCTV. As a result of that, a number of suspects have been identified, and a man was arrested following our wanted on warrant appeals. And also last month, we appealed for information in relation to the bombings in Bell Turbot, Clonus, and Patigal back in 1972. We would like to thank everyone who assists with our appeals and want to reassure them that we are working through the information that they provided. Again, if anyone out there has any information, please contact us tonight. OK, and before we go, some sad news. I think this stemmed from an appeal we showed last September. That's correct. Very sad indeed. Um, back in September, we appealed for help to locate a missing person named Damien Ben in Wicklow area. Unfortunately, Damien was found deceased just before Christmas. Damien's family are very grateful for all the public support and assistance in searching him. OK, and our thoughts are with the Bain family. Don, yes. Thank you. Uh, now, still to come tonight, captured on CCTV, a robbery in Dublin's Temple Bar where the victim was knocked unconscious. Don't go away. Join us right after the break. You're very welcome back. Next to a case of robbery in Dublin's Temple Bar where CCTV captures the incident. Here's Gartha David Dolan. Suspects appear behind him. They wait close to the junction of East Essex Street. Both suspects double back down Sycamore Street and approach the victim. One of the suspects is observed on CCTV footage punching the victim to the face, causing him to lose consciousness. One of the suspects then kicks the man in the head. The two suspects removed the victim's phone, watch and wallet. Two people witnessed the event on Sycamore Street and we are appealing to those to come forward and assist us with the investigation. The two suspects travelled from Sycamore Street across the Liffey towards North King Street.
both males enter a store on North King Street where they use the injured party's bank cards. This was a busy store. Were you a customer in the store? And do you remember these men? The first suspect is described as being approximately 5 foot 10 in height. He's a slim build and a tight black hair. He wore a black shirt, black shorts, and carried a black satchel bag. The second suspect is described as being approximately 5 foot 8 in height. He's of slim build and he has short black hair. This male wore a black jumper with a gold stripe across the front of it. He also wore a pair of black jeans. Were you in Temple Bar on the 30th of July? Do you know these men? If so, please contact Crime Call tonight. That was Gartha David Dolan appealing for information about a robbery in Dublin's Temple Bar. And if you think you can help, the numbers, as always, are on your screen. But next, it's Gartha Adrian Corcoran from Rhodes Policing. And we're going to do a quick review of the stats for 2022, Adrian. They do not make for pretty reading. They certainly don't, Sharon. And 156 people lost their lives on our roads in 2022. When we compare that to the previous year, 2021, it was 137. Um, you know, so it's an increase there of 19 deaths. And we look back to pre-COVID in 2019, it was 140. So it is, it's really disappointing to see the figures creeping up uh, over the years. It's very grim. And we're focusing tonight on a particularly uh, vulnerable class of road user, and that is the pedestrian. It is, and we, we spoke about them on the October programme. And at that stage, um, you know, 22 pedestrians had lost their lives on, on our roads. There was 10 weeks from that programme to the end of the year, and a further 20. Um, you know, so it's two a week in, in that period really is concerning. Right, that is really something else. Um, and you have a couple of bits there that really could be of assistance because the critical window in those cases are between midnight and 5 a.m. It is, it's 12 to, 12 to 5 a.m. during the hours of darkness. Um, and again, in October, we spoke about the high-vis jacket. But there are other options to people if they don't want to wear a high-vis jacket. The, the likes of this thing, it's a... A, an armband, you know, very small, you can put it in your pocket, in your handbag. There's other armbands here. These are lights which are designed for pedal cycles, but again, you could hang them on a handbag or carry them in your hand. Um, and we have the hat here. So, look, there's, there's many ways that people can make themselves yeah, more visible. I think, and we've discussed this before, that the penny has dropped with the walkers and the joggers, and you see them out. Even the dogs are lit up half the time. But this particular cohort, uh, leaving the pubs, leaving the nightclubs, uh, possibly a few drinks on board, you surely come across them yourself in your, in yeah, your line and, of duty. and as you say, they're socialising, their, their guard is down, and it's about planning ahead. I mean, you know, as you say, the, the joggers and walkers are... are well prepared these days but you know we'd say to people if they are going out to plan ahead and stick one of these things in their pockets and as you say over the Christmas period and, and the couple of weeks since we really have noticed an increase in people you know the, the hours 12 to 5 and they're coming out of nightclubs and pubs and fast food joints. And they're, they're, they're filing towards uh, you know dual carriageways and, and, and motorways and really they're yeah, they're, they don't have their wits about No, the priority is to get home, maybe get a taxi or whatever. And as you say, I experienced it myself only on Saturday night gone. There was p passing a popular nightclub and had slowed down because I was conscious of people walking out. And sure enough, um, a guy with a black jacket and a hood up walked straight out in front of a marked patrol car. So, you know, it really just goes to show that... Um, what, you know, what can happen. Yes, and the responsibility too on the driver, expect the unexpected d during those, th th those wee small hours. Yeah, and it's urban areas as well, you know. Right. So again, yeah, we'd ask drivers to be, to be aware that, you know, people are going to walk out uh, um, mm. during the hours of darkness. What are the other kind of headline figures then from last year, Adrian? Yeah, so 61 drivers um, lost their lives in the roads. And, you know, there are four driver behaviours which lead to... Um, fatal collisions and we have some stats here in relation to the four offences you know um, we see there are over 165,000 uh, motorists were detected speeding um, failure to wear a seatbelt you know almost 6,000 holding a mobile phone over 18,000 and driving under the influence of drugs or alcohol over 8,000 so you know there's a lot of people out there still not getting the messages all right and we'll talk to you again uh, next month thank you so much adrian next it's gartha tara brady with the faces to which we're hoping you can match a name thanks sharon first tonight guardian mount Bellew in county galway are investigating an assault and the theft from a car 
Here is an evil fit of one of the suspects. On Saturday, November 12th last, at 7.30pm, the victim was attending a ceremony at St. Patrick's Church in Moylock County, Galway, when he heard a car alarm going off in the car park. When he went outside, he saw a man interfering with his car. The victim confronted the suspect and an altercation ensued. A second suspect then arrived and the victim was struck on the head with a metal bar. Both suspects left in a black Audi A3 with a partial reg of 12G. One of the suspects is described as being 5 foot 7 in height and of stocky build. He had a round shaped face and blue eyes with short black hair. He was dressed in black runners, a hoodie and a balaclava. Next, Gardaí are investigating a burglary at Earls Vale Place in Cavan Town on Friday the 2nd of December last. Here is an evil fit of the male suspect. Sometime between 5.10 and 5.30pm, it is believed that the suspect forced a locked door and entered the house, which was occupied at the time. The suspect is described as being in his mid-30s, 6 foot 2 in height with a round shaped face. He was wearing a light blue airwalk cap with white lettering. If you have any information about either of these men, please get in touch. Back to you, Sharon. Tara, thank you. Next, Crime Prevention Officer Sergeant Deirdre O'Neill joins us and we're down on the farm, Deirdre, for this segment. And tech really is where it's at when it comes to protecting uh, your, your property and your machinery. Absolutely. I suppose the best approach is good physical security and we do recommend that people look at that area first, maybe have an annual review and have a look from the perimeter inwards to see what they can do to improve it. But it's not always possible to have the gates locked all the time, so there's some really clever tech out there. So there's... Um, portable CCTV solar panelled units that will broadcast the image by 3G so they'll get, deliver audio and video either to a monitored alarm company that you've engaged or directly to your phone so they're a really useful way of determining who's coming in and out of your property. And relatively inexpensive technology certainly compared to years ago. Absolutely the prices come down hugely they're easy to use easy to install and they're transferable as well these particular type. And other really really handy gadgets you have a couple there uh, in front of you Deirdre. Yes yeah, so I suppose for those items on the farm that are portable like our quads trailers, tractors, these are tracking devices and they're relatively cheap. This one here is retails for about 55 euros and then you pay for a subscription. This one retails for about 200 euros that includes the subscription for three years. So they do what they say in the tin, they will track your item if it is unfortunately stolen from your property. And you mentioned that the trailers and the quads, tractors too, is that typically Absolutely. what we're seeing being yeah, stolen? We, we're still seeing quads being stolen, trailers being stolen and some tractors as well and also the GPS devices from the more high-end tractors are being stolen so they are a useful option to install into the GPS unit. Okay, so a couple of hundred euro but when you compare that to the value of the item you're, Absolutely. you're losing. Absolutely, massive cost in some of those items and uh, they have assisted on Garda Siakana in recovering items and returning them to the owners. And crime prevention officers you're, you're ready and willing to give this advice to go on to the farm uh, should anyone uh, be looking for yeah, I mean, a bit We of will advice. do security reviews and all the details of the crime prevention officers are available on the Garda.ie website. Right, okay. Um, something I know you have spoken about before and Graham, your predecessor, um, is to mark your your valuables. Yeah, so we do encourage people to mark their items with a unique identifier and probably the simplest one is your air code. So, and then we'd ask you to track that on the property app as well, which we've launched. It's really simple to use. You upload your details and then you take photographs of all your valuable items, including whatever way you've marked that item. And you were here at the launch of that app and you promised us all it's very, very easy to use. Yeah, and it is, to be honest. Yeah, it's simple, it's direct and again that data is yours to retain on your phone until such time as you choose to share it. All right, and we didn't have, don't have time to, to talk about the, the, the livestock, but uh, that is also a trend that we're seeing. We may return uh, to that. Uh, Deirdre, uh, thank you. And that's all we have time for tonight. We've been asking if you have any information about these two suspects captured on CCTV during a robbery in Dublin's Temple Bar. Do you have any information about this man wanted in connection with a case of hijacking in Darren Turn, County Kildare? Who is this man wanted in relation to a cash and transit robbery in Mullingar, County Westmeath? And do you have any information that could help solve the hit and run case which killed Jerry Keane? That's our lot. We'll be back on Monday, February the 27th. In the meantime, good night and thanks for watching. <laughs>